So in this video I want to talk about the last part of the task one, which is the GDP analysis. Now I'm not going to do most of this for you because that's the whole point, is for you to do this section. But I want to talk about a couple of things. One, how to put all this into Excel in a way that your instructor can easily find and read your answers. And number two, I want to give you some discussions about how to calculate this number seven part here with Excel. Alright, so let's go back here for a second. So we have a spreadsheet, and if I scroll out, you can see. It's got the graphs over here, it's got the table over here, it's got the descriptive statistics, so everything's nice and labeled. So I'm going to make another section, and I can put it kind of anywhere I want. So you could go farther over to the right, you could go um, down below, you can kind of put it any place you so desire. But you have to have it somewhere. I'm going to put it down here, because I can. I'm going to call it Part 6 which is GDP analysis. Okay, so now here is where it gets a little interesting. Because if you just start typing in Excel, things can go a little wonky. That's why I have these cells merged, see the merge in center? Because if I unmerge them, they're actually writing over separate cells. So cell F27 is writing over, written over by what I wrote in E27. So I just kind of highlight them and merge them. So you have that option. You could highlight a bunch of cells and merge them. But it still thinks it's an Excel cell, which is kind of not what you want. What you want is to answer a bunch of questions. So the easiest way to do that is to click Insert. And over here on the right, you want to insert a text box. So I'm going to insert text box. And I'm going to move my cursor down here. And I'm going to highlight and drag. And it's essentially like inserting a giant post-it note or a piece of paper into your problem. And you can make it larger. You might have to, if you, if you write enough, you might have to go down to the bottom and click on the, when it, you let your mouse hover over, your cursor hover over the bottom corners or the bottom um, edge, and it'll turn into an arrow, and then you can drag it and make it larger. And then you would type in here. So question number one. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Question number two, yada, 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 right? And so on. And that's the best way, honestly, for you and your instructor to follow along. You don't have to rewrite the questions because your instructor knows the questions. But having them all numbered and lettered and labeled will make things very easy for the instructor to follow all your work. All right. So you're cruising along, you've got all your answers all typed out, everything's good. And then you get to question number seven. And by the way, no, I'm not implying that any of these questions take less space than any others. <laughs> right? But here you go down to question seven. And it's asking you to find the z-score for the U.S. Now there's a couple ways to do that, but you have to do it with Excel. So usually what students do is they will find a cell that's near to the piece of paper that they're working in. So here's question seven right here. Da da da, you know, Z score is equal to yada yada, C cell, and then they'll tell me what cell to look in. L41, for example. So let me look at L41. L41's right here. Or I could say L42 or L43, something near where you happen to be. All right, now there's a couple ways you can do this for a z-score, and I'm going to show you both of them. There's this z-score formula that you learn in class. So equals, then you have to find that numerator. You've got to find the value for the U.S. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to find the U.S.'s value. And the U.S. I can see is in cell B96 for me column B96. So if I go back up to L, there it is. So I could say take cell B96 minus the mean. But the mean I calculated all the way up here. For me it's in cell F3. Close my parentheses, divide it by my standard deviation, which right here is in cell F7. It might be in a different place for you. So don't use my cell references. Use whatever cell references are appropriate for your problem. And press Enter. And there we have it. Perfect. So then I would say over here, the z-score for the U.S. is 2.753. All right, now there's another way you could do it. 
And I'm going to do it in a different cell just so you can see how they're going to work out. So I type equals, and there's actually a command for finding z-scores. It's called standardize. And you can say take equal standardize, and then I want to tell it what to standardize. So the value I want to tell it is the US's value. So for me, that's cell B96. So it says, OK, I will standardize cell B96. That's my x value. But what's the mean and what's the standard deviation? So I tell it comma, and then I click on the mean cell. The mean for me was in cell F2, comma. The standard deviation was in cell F7 for me. Close my parentheses, enter, and there you go. So either type in the formula with cell references, or you can use the standardized formula, which literally finds z-scores. That's what the standardized formula does. We should tell you how important z-scores are going to be later in the course if Excel bothers to actually have a formula for it. All right, there you go. And then the rest of it, you would just type and write. Make sure that you give thorough explanations with plenty of context where required, and I'll go from there. And remember, if you write so much that you run out of paper at the end, you can always drag the box down and make it so it's a little bit longer. You don't want to drag it to the right now because you have calculations in column L and you don't want to cover those up. But you could always drag it lower so you can write more. Make sure when you're done you save. Always want to save every step of the way. And we're not done yet, though. We still have a whole other section to do, namely task two, which is about infant mortality. So when you're done with writing up your analysis questions, you're done with this portion, but you still have a whole other portion to deal with, namely the next page, which is the mortality portion. And I'll see you back here for more tutorials on that later.